So now that we have our model ready and we have put that in a folder, which is rfclassified.pickle, and we have put all the requirements that we will be needing and that we needed to run the code as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create fast API that could interact with the front end, which was developed on HTML, JS, and CSS. So this app main.py is going to do all the work. It's going to bring Langchain to our environment and it's going to do all of the things. So first of all, we'd be going for is the import, some important imports, because without them, we will not be able to do anything. So we are also going to import a chatbot, which is basically a separate module that we have to create. After that, we can import the UVI corn server to run a UVI corn app. And we can do that by this. Now, the first thing would be to create an instance of fast API. After that, we'll be needing the model. So we're going to load the model first. And this is the model. It's present in this directory. So first of all, we have to create a pedantic model. Because from in order to get text from HTML, we have to do this thing. And we'll be placing all the features that we learned that were helpful through feature learning. So we won't be using anything else from that, okay? So we also have to configure all the static files, like for the purpose of design, and all for CSS. And that's how it's going on here. The template for HTML rendering would also be required. And we are using Jinja2 template for the purpose of HTML rendering. Now we have to work on the function that would be doing the predictions for by taking all the variables and it would be returning the output. So this is a normal Python function and we'll go through it. So it takes all the features and then it would convert them into an array so that scikit-learn could use then it would do the normal pre-processing to it. And then finally, it would send the model.predict function along with this value and it would predict the output. So that's the function used for prediction. Now for the API part, we'll be needing some endpoints so that we could take some things from there. So the first endpoint is to serve the HTML input. So here is how we can get values to the form. And after that, we can create an endpoint to receive whatever the prediction data is coming from. So we're calling it predict dot that we defined here. We'll be calling this function and it will be taking all the predictions with it. Now what we're going to do is we are going to create another endpoint. So the first endpoint is for the form. The other endpoint is for predict. And now what we're going to do is we have first to render the template. And in that template, we have to show that what the predictions are. So this functions code is left now. So we'll first fill it and it will just return it. We'll have another pedantic model that we'll be using for chat. And if you don't get it right now, so no need to worry because we'll be creating another file, which is chat.py. So now the endpoint that I was talking about is the endpoint for the purpose of chatbot interactions, because for now we'll just be making models for ML interaction. Now we are going to work for chatbot interaction. So for chatbot interaction, we are getting chat request, get chatbot response. And this get chatbot response function is basically, we define it here, and it's going to use chat request dot history. And these all things are going to come from this pedantic model. So this is for chatbot interaction, we'll be going with chat dot pi file, and that will make things more clear. So we're done here, we just need to close this up in the main function, so that the code could know where to start from. Now let's just save it and move to the chat.py file. So now we are inside the chat.py file and in chat.py file, we first need to do a standard thing, which is to import the files. And the other step would be to define the API key. So for now, I'm just leaving it blank. You could use your own open API key, which is easy to get. So I'll just leave it here and I'll fill it afterwards. After that, we can define the model name and whichever model we are working with. So for now, we are going to work with chat GPT 3.5 turbo. And this is GPT 3.5 turbo, the one that is also present in chat GPT. So we're going to use the same model. 
After that, we have to create an open API instance, which is basically defining an LLM model through it. So it takes the model that we defined, it sets the temperature, which is a variable, and then it says about the key. Now we have to create chatbot function that could take information history, message and output so that everything is made to the context. And we can work with that. So we'll build this gradually. First thing would be to define this function. And afterwards, what we will be doing is we will be having a prompt template. And the prompt template that we have used here is quite lengthy, but I'll explain it. So the first step in this function is to have a prompt template. And this prompt template is quite straightforward that we are first defining the role that you are assisting a farmer with information. Soil will be provided to you. The prediction of drought is this. Ask the user chat history and everything after that. So that's what our chat history is. And after that, we have to create a prompt template. So we're using this framework, which is Langchain. And this is the standard that we have to follow. We first define a prompt and you can see that prompt template is there. And this is the actual prompt that will be going and not just a prompt template because we need actual information such as history and message and everything. So from here on, we will be moving to creating the instance, which is the first important thing here. And we have here the LLM chain instance created after that. We will be generating a response and that is the response that we need to return also. So we are done with the chat.py function and this chat.py function could be used in the main.py file. And if you can see that we have imported from chat, import chatbot. So this chatbot function is actually what we have imported and it does all the things. It would receive these things such as information, history, message, output through our pedantic model from HTML and then it will return the response on the page. So now it's time for the demo. We will run the app and for running it, you must have first code, then you have to activate the scripts. Requirements installation, and since I already have the environment with me, so I'll just run the app. So we need to, we'll first go into the terminal. Okay, so here we are now at the terminal and with drought. And what I need to do is I just need to run up uvi corn main colon app dash dash reload and this address is actually already in use it means i need to run some already running files so let us free up the space so now if i run it it gives me this address and the application startup is completed so i need to go to any browser and in this browser we can just paste that address and here you can see that our app is ready and we can use it we'll just put some dummy variables here so we can play with it and I'm not sure if it supports such vague values, but still we can just put it. So now when I run predict, it gives me a prediction that my soil is abnormally dry, right? So let's see if chatbot works. Hi, I am trying to grow rice. Why this soil is not working out. This model would take some time. It will take our prompt to open API and then it will return other information back along with the answer. So, okay, it says that irrigation management ensures proper irrigation management is there. It can also see that based on information you provide, the prediction of drought is zero, indicating an abnormally dry condition and soil conservation practices and a lot of things like that. So you could imagine how helpful it will be for farmers to understand exactly what it is there that they could do in order to solve the problem of their drought.